Hi everyone, my name is Shari. I am one of the youth leaders and kids ministry leaders here at Gen 12 Church. Um, this is my first time doing Wednesday Word on my own, so uh, I am very excited. And I would like to pray to begin us, uh, to begin our night. Um, so if you could please join me in prayer as we wait for others to join on as well. Um, but let's welcome the Holy Spirit into our homes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for this time that we have where we can spend it in your word and spend it in your presence. And right now, Lord, I just pray of every household, Lord, every, every person that is joining me tonight, that your presence will fill their homes, that your presence will be here, and that as we read your word, that you would bring clarity, Holy Spirit. I pray that you would make everything clear and you would give us understanding that as we read through all these scriptures that um this would bring transformation lord and um it'll set people free father and um it'll bring real change lord in our hearts and so i thank you so much lord for this opportunity my god for you to use us lord and, and use this time especially uh, for your glory we thank you and give you all the honor all the praise lord jesus in your wonderful name we pray amen Amen. Amen. So, today, sorry if you're wondering why I'm looking to the side, I've got my notes here. Today, uh, the topic of what I want to be sharing is called, Am I Useful for the Master? And we're going to be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. We're going to go throughout that chapter, um, but for now I just want you to turn to verse 20. So as you get that out, grab your Bibles, or if you need to use your phone, use your phone. And it reads, so verse, so we're going from 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20, and it says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore it Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. So just for some context, um, this right here, this is Paul. It's his letter to Timothy. Um, and in it, he's writing the them that he's talking about. Um, so this whole message is, is for a certain group of people. And this is just the people that Timothy is overseeing and he's leading and, um, and who he's in charge of. Um, and so that's who this letter is directed to. Paul uses vessels as an analogy um, to describe the fact that there are two types of people. People that honor God and people that dishonor God. And he uses vessels as the example. So how can we know the difference between a vessel that is honorable to God and a vessel that is dishonorable? Thankfully, Paul basically writes out a list, um, you could call it, of things to flee from and things to pursue. And that's, what, uh, that's the difference between what is honorable and what is dishonorable to God. So we're gonna go through that list. Um, he specifies it um, in, verse 14 to 16 so we're going to read it out it says remind them of these things charging them before the lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers be diligent to present yourself approved to god a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth he also carries on in verses 22 to 26 and it says flee also youthful lusts but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the, tr may know the truth, 
and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Um, so that might have been a bit confusing, but um, I wrote down the list of things to flee from and things to pursue. So in the first list in here, Paul says we must flee youthful lusts, foolish and ignorant disputes, quarrels, idle babblers, false teachings and iniquity. So he's saying, um, and it's funny because when I was first reading through this, um, some of the things on there, I kind of didn't really think that that was a problem. Like I knew it wasn't good, but um, in comparison to say iniquity or in comparison to youthful lust, I thought that they were minuscule or not as bad but in here paul says to flee from it that they are equivalent they are things that we need to stay away from things like foolish and ignorant disputes getting involved in problems that are just not worth getting involved in um quarrels so having problems with people arguments conflict um idle babblers people who just talk and talk and talk and talk um with no meaning, no um, good intention behind what they say. Um, idle babblers, people that just talk and, and, and don't, you know, their words do not profit anything. Um, they do not bring encouragement. They do not help. It is just babble. Yeah. Um, see, those things, we must flee from those too. We might think that they're not as bad or um, that they're, oh, like, it's not that bad of a deal to you know, still have those issues or characteristics in us. But Paul says that we must flee from those things. These are qualities that make us dishonorable to God. Amen? Amen. Type amen if you amen that. Um, it carries on. And he says, here is a list of things to pursue. So if we're fleeing from something, we need to be pursuing something else. And here is what he says. He says to pursue righteousness love, peace, faith, kindness, gentleness, patience, and fellowship with other believers. Pretty much he's saying to pursue the Spirit, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, um, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. As you go through the list, you realize like, oh, these are the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Are, these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He says to flee from all other ways, all iniquity, all, all bad habits, all characteristics that we carry that cause us to be dishonorable to God. And he says to chase after and pursue, to pursue is to go after intentionally. Um, you don't just gain these characteristics by just being. Like you need to pursue righteousness. You need to pursue love and peace and faith. You need to pursue kindness. You need to pursue patience and gentleness. These are characteristics that must be learned. These are characteristics that we have to unteach um, old ways of doing things. And we have to learn how to um, be more like the Holy Spirit. And um, I love that he paints that picture so quickly, so clearly. Um, so um, to sum all that up, in order for us to uh, be useful to God, I have put it out in three points. The first point is, we must be first cleansed. We must be cleansed from our sin, from false doctrine. We must be cleansed of our old habits, our old ways of doing life. We must be cleansed of our old men. Number two, we must pursue holiness. In verse 15 of that same chapter, I'll read it out. It says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We must actively pursue and be diligent in that pursuit to be more like Christ, to um, offer ourselves approved before God. God commands us to strive for holiness. And number three, we must be prepared. In and out of season, we must be available and, and ready to be used by God. So those three steps, be cleansed, pursue holiness, and be prepared in order for us to be useful to God. 
I just want to share a little story. Um, I'll actually, I'll wait. I'll share that after this. So verse 21, I'll read it out. It says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself of the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. The goal in which we strive for, the goal that Christians and believers must strive for, um, and this goes for everyone. This isn't just a certain group of Christians or just the leaders or just the ministry leaders. No, every believer, what we need to strive for is that, we, you know, our goal is to be useful for the master, is to be useful and prepared for every good work. That's what that verse says. And what does that look like? You might be sitting there and thinking like, I want to be useful for God, but how? Well, like, what does that what does that mean today in this age? Um, we're in lockdown. We're here in Melbourne. Everything is shut down pretty much um, unless you're working and um, and you have essential work. And, you know, what does that look like? What does it look like to be useful, for, you know, to God? And you might be thinking, like, church isn't even, like, we're not even meeting up collectively. We're not even meeting up together anymore. Like, how can I be used by God? And I wrote it down in this, um, in my notes, and I said, um, so to be useful for the master and prepare for every good work, what does that look like? It is a limitless number of opportunities and encounters where God can use you to further the sharing of the gospel through seemingly mundane and ordinary events that can alter the destination of someone's eternity. And what that means is, um, is that every day in our lives, um, what seems ordinary, what seems mundane, what seems like just daily routines that you do, that if you are willing and you're prepared, that God can use those, you know, those little encounters that you might have, for example, with the delivery guy that comes to your house to drop off deliveries, or with your siblings, with your spouse, with your children. If you have, you know, little opportunities, you know, you might not think that they they matter or that they can, you know, that they you know that you can impact others, but you can. Um, with God, he can use any opportunity that you allow him to share the gospel to someone else. I really hope that makes sense. Um <laughs> Because in my mind, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, what does that look like? Being available to God. It means that in one day, 24 hours, that there are endless, endless, endless opportunities for God to use you as a vessel um, for his message to be shared, for the gospel to get out there, um, whether that be to your friends, your family, or your a, or a stranger that you know comes by your house or you see someone walking past you um when you go for your walk for your your hour of um your hour of free time um getting out of the house um yeah that god can use those those moments those encounters for his glory amen and what i wanted to share before um was a little testimony of how i how i've seen or um, a moment that i've seen god do that um so when i was in new zealand last year um i was with liam and we went to his church and um afterwards this was my first time there and so i was just meeting everyone for the first time um and when i went we went to church and afterwards all the young adults were meeting up at kfc uh to eat and so we were we went there and um obviously i was in a place of being nervous and i was in a place of being like oh, okay like i don't really know anyone here um the couple of people that i do know um they were making me feel comfortable and things like that um but when we sat down i um i was introduced to one of liam's friends and um and what started off with being a pretty average conversation, uh, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that the Holy Spirit wanted to use it as an opportunity um, to bring change or to do something. 
And so um, you've got to imagine that we're sitting in KFC and like on this like a really long table and we're surrounded by all the other young adults uh, from the church and we're sitting there, we're just talking and um, and like I, I felt holy, like the Holy Spirit, I was like, oh, like I know that this is, this is an opportunity that, you know, that he wants to move and he wants to speak to someone. And, and as I was, I was sitting there talking to her and I just started sharing about um, what God has done in my life and um, sharing about his goodness and, and how much I love him. And, um, and it was crazy because we felt God's presence, like just as you would feel it like in worship, um, when you're like really, you know, in a, in a worship song and, um, everyone is just fully immersed in the presence of God, you know what it feels like. And, um, it was crazy because we're sitting in KFC and we could feel the presence of God. And it was just, it was almost if like, almost as if like everyone else wasn't there because we were so involved in our, um, in our conversation. And I even completely forgot that Liam was sitting right next to me. Like I was so involved in my conversation with her and we we're just talking about the Lord. And, and it was almost, it was so weird. Like, um, we were just sharing about what, you know, what God was doing in our lives and, um, and it was almost as if other people weren't there, which is crazy to think about. You see that they talk about that in movies, but like for the first time, I think I really felt that, um, because we're just so, um, caught up in God's presence. Um, and eventually like, uh, she ends up sharing about something that she was, you know, going through. And, um, and in that moment I knew I was like, Oh, I just learned about this. Like when I was back home in Melbourne, I'd been doing a lot of study and the, you know, the exact issue that she was, um, experiencing during that time that season that she was going through i had just learned about it and god had taught me a lot about it and um and i ended up sharing her sharing with her you know what you know what the lord had um revealed to me and um she and she ended up crying and um it ended up being like a crazy experience for her and um she, it was her answer and her confirmation for um, what she was seeking the Lord for. Um, and so it was like a really crazy experience and for the both of us. Um, and you got to remember that before meeting her, like I, that was my first time, you know, talking to this uh, young woman who's my age as well. Um, I had no idea who she was. I didn't know her story, but um, but because I knew I went into, you know, went into that situation, um, just prepared for God to do something. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew that I wanted to be used by God and I had to allow him to lead me in that way. And, um, he did, he showed up and he showed up at KFC, um, and praise God for that because she was seeking and she was searching for an answer. And, um, I was honored to be part of you know, God answering that prayer for her. Um, and every person, like if you're watching, you can have these moments, you can have these encounters with people. Um, you just have to be an open vessel. You just have to be cleansed. You have to pursue holiness and you have to be prepared, like allow God to use you. Um, you gotta be willing. So my encouragement is to share your testimony. Um, and go out there and allow God to use you. Amen? Type amen. So, um, where is it? Sorry, let me just grab out my book. So before I close off, I just want to share a little bit of my testimony, kind of sum it up. Um, so I grew up in a church pretty much all my life. I was in and out of church growing up from New Zealand and even, um, and then when I moved here to Oz, um, I was in and out of church, um, just following my parents or going my, going with my auntie and uncles, um, when I could. And I was a sinner. 
I was a, even though I grew up in church, um, I used to think that attending church was enough and that made me a good enough person because I just went to church. And I didn't realize that I was a sinner who was condemned by my sin um, and that my destiny, like my, where I was heading was hell. I did not realize that as a teenager. And um, thankfully I was introduced to God as my father and I was introduced to Jesus and the sacrifice that he made and I learned that um, that before Christ, before I had Christ as my savior, that I didn't realize that I was destined for hell because my sin is what, you know, damned me there. Um, and I didn't realize that if I wanted to spend eternity in heaven, that I would need a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know that I needed to believe in, you know, this Jesus and I needed to believe in the sacrifice that he made on the cross. I didn't understand it. And you know, the word says that, you know, God said it himself that his people, they, they, uh, they live a life of destruction and they, they are destructed. Um, what's the word? Due to lack of knowledge, um, you know, people are led to destruction and, um, it really is like that, that when we don't know that we're sinners, we don't know that we need Christ, we continue to live a life of sin and we, we don't know that, you know, we need saving. And, um, if this is your first time, you know, hearing about Jesus, um, I want you to know that, you know, I don't want you to live a life oblivious to you know what might happen to you or what's going to happen to you if you do not have christ um if we do not have christ if we do not believe that he is the son of god the savior of mankind um we don't believe in the cross or what he did and we don't receive him as our savior i want you to know that hell is destined for you just as it was for me just as it is for anyone else out there in the world that we must believe in Jesus um, and and receive him as our savior. But I'll carry on with my testimony. So I truly received salvation. Even though I grew up in church, I truly received salvation and believe that Jesus died and took my punishment um, of sin and death when I was about, I think I was 14. Yeah, it was like my second year of high school. 14, 15, towards the end of that year. So I have been saved for the last nine years, genuinely. Um, and although I've walked through numerous and countless trials and um, gone through many things that I wouldn't wish other people to go through, um, I'm thankful because over the last nine years, I knew that I was never alone in those moments. I, I knew that when I had received Jesus, I... It was like my eyes were open and I realized that God was with me all along. And um, and so in the last nine years, I've had the absolute honor of being able to share with others in that time as well. Um, how my life has changed since Christ has been my savior, since I've decided to live for Jesus. And um, I want you to know that you can do the same also. That just as God has used me in my life and I'm sure many, many others who have, you know, used this platform to share about God's goodness and what he has done, um, that he can do the same in you also. And that I want you to know as a whole, the three steps in order for us to be useful to God, we must be first cleansed from our sin. So we must repent. We must turn away from, um, our sin, our sinful life. Second, we must pursue holiness. We must pursue and uh, and strive to be more like God. And how do we do that? Through the, the fruits of the Spirit, by pursuing those characteristics. And number three, we must be prepared. Be prepared wherever you are for God to use you. Whether you're at work, whether you are shopping at Coles or Woolworths, or whether you're at KFC, surrounded by a whole bunch of other young adults, 
um, you can allow God to use you the very same. Amen. So if you've heard the word tonight and you've been encouraged and if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, but you would like to, I'm going to be praying a prayer of salvation right now. And I would ask that you join me in doing so. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of saving. My sin has condemned me to hell, but I believe that when you died on the cross and rose again, that you took my punishment upon yourself. Please forgive me. I repent from my sin and way of life. I believe you are the Son of God, and I surrender my life to you. Help me to do the Father's will. I receive you as my savior and as my friend. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you for joining me today. If you do have any other questions or uh, would like to get in contact with uh, myself or any of the other leaders, you can do so through the church page. And if you would like to know more about your faith, please, if you've said this prayer, um, I would ask you to message the church page right after this, um, letting us know that you've received Jesus as your savior um, so we can get in contact with you and build things from there. And so I thank you for spending time with me tonight in God's word. And I pray that you have a blessed night. Bye, everyone.